Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again, and welcome back to Creative Restorations. All right, so you're wanting to refinish your pool table. Well, guess what? With a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill, a lot of the right tools and materials, you can achieve close to, if not actual, professional results with refinishing your pool table. Stick around, I'm gonna give you part one of how to refinish your pool table. Let me give you a little bit more about my background. Prior to Hurricane Katrina back in 2005, I decided I was gonna expand my business and start doing a lot of furniture restoration, pool table restoration, and specifically high-end piano restoration. For several years there, in fact, we had the contract with the Steinway & Sons distributor here in New Orleans. So for several years, if there was a Steinway piano that was getting refinished through the distributor, it was gonna come to my shop and we were gonna do all of the hand-rubbed finish on those pianos. Now, I said that this was gonna be a multi-part video, and it is. It's gonna, we're gonna break this down into three separate parts. The first one, which is this one, we're gonna address how to get the old finish off of the pool table. In part two, we're gonna address how to do the repairs, the necessary repairs, on all of the parts. And in part three, we're gonna get into the actual finish work and give you the tools and the instructions on how to achieve that high-end hand rubbed finish for your pool table. And that's really what you should be looking for if you're wanting your pool table to look like new or even better than new. Yeah, you can make your table look even better than it did from the factory with just a little bit of knowledge. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is go over to Home Depot and pick up a quart, not a gallon, because at this point, you don't even know what type of finish the manufacturer had put on there or what somebody else may have put over the top of the manufacturer's finish. Is it something that's gonna be easily gotten off? Is it easy to get off of the table? Because if it isn't easy to get off, something like a, an epoxy finish or some of the catalyzed finishes, eh, you're going to want to stop dead in your tracks, okay? If you can't manage to easily get the old finish off, you are going to want to stop right here. Don't go any further. Oh no, watch the video, but don't do it on your own table. Mechanically removing the old finish is absolutely the worst thing that you're going to want to do. You will end up with a blotchy pool table. You will end up with some areas that are better sanded than others. You're gonna end up with a lot of cracks and crevices that are still gonna have the old finish on it. And I can tell you from experience that some finishes will shed new finishes. So if you go to put something else that is incompatible on top of the old finish, it will shed it like old skin. So. Again, if it's not easily removed, don't attempt to do this. So here's what you do. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to Home Depot and pick up a quart, not a gallon, but a quart of clean strip. Clean strip, I have found, works the absolute best. It comes in a kind of an orangey gold can. As a matter of fact, I'll put up a picture of it. So the clean strip, again, I've found that I get the best results using clean strip. What you're going to do is in an inconspicuous spot on the table, you're going to want to put maybe about a one inch by one inch square somewhere tucked away that is finished out, maybe the back side of a leg or something like that. You're going to want to apply some of the clean strip, wait about five to 10 minutes and then wipe it off with a rag. Did the finish come off? If it did, let's keep on going. If it didn't, again, stop right here and don't go any further. Don't attempt this. Now, if it did come off, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is completely disassemble your pool table. 
Now, I have another video on here showing exactly how to go about disassembling your pool table. It's pretty easy to do with a few tools. I encourage you, and I'll leave the link right up here somewhere, uh, I encourage you to check out that video if you're wanting to go further. If you're wanting to replace the rubber at the same time that you're doing all this, and now's a good time to do it, I'll leave another link right up here so that you can learn how to re uh, replace the rubber on your pool table. Again, this is a good time to do it. You're putting all this time and effort and money into your pool table. Why not make it back to like new? Now, once you've figured out that your table is actually capable of being stripped down, the next thing you're going to want to do is go back to Home Depot and you're going to want to buy some supplies, okay? And here are the supplies that you're going to need. Number one, you're going to need a set of sawhorses so that you can get up off the ground. Number two, you're going to need a piece of three quarter inch plywood large enough that you can make into a workbench. Number three, you need some masking tape, preferably green masking tape. 3M puts out a really nice green masking tape that works very well against really aggressive chemicals like lacquer, like or a lacquer thinner, like stripping agents, that kind of thing. So green masking tape, not the blue stuff. The blue stuff will peel off. You will end up getting stripper and lacquer thinner underneath and ruining other parts. Use green. The next thing you're going to want to get is steel wool. Now, number zero or number double zero, double aught or single aught steel wool will be perfect for getting off the old finish. You're going to need about four gallons of lacquer thinner, three to four gallons of lacquer thinner. You're going to need some masking paper. Uh, let's see, what else are you going to need? You're also going to need you're also going to need some Scotch-Brite pads, okay? And some, finally, some buckets and rags. Okay, get all of your materials together and take everything outside. You've got your table disassembled, got the cloth taken off of it. Everything is, you, you may or may not have taken the rail, the rubber off of the rails. Oh, and if you haven't removed the rubber, now's a good time to use that masking tape. Okay, I would recommend two inch wide masking tape, but if all you can get is three quarter or one inch masking tape, that will work just fine as well. You'll just have to do it in layers. Now that you have everything, bring everything outside along with your parts and you're going to work in small batches. Keep in mind, safety first. You do not want to do this stuff indoors. You do not want to do this stuff barehanded. You do not want to do this stuff without eye protection and mouth protection. These are some pretty harsh chemicals that you're going to be dealing with, and you may have sensitivity to these types of chemicals. If you do, don't attempt this. If you don't, or you feel as though you can deal with it, carry on. So now that you've got all of your materials, you've donned your plastic gloves, you've donned your protective eyewear, Bring everything outside, take all of your parts, which really shouldn't be all that many. You're talking about six rails, six aprons, a cabinet, and four legs. Not really an awful lot to the table, right? First thing you're going to do is set up your sawhorses, put your three quarter inch plywood down, and line it on the top with your masking paper. You may want to tape down the edges just so the wind doesn't blow it around, but yeah, tape down your edges. Once you've done all that, now it's time to get busy stripping the wood. So with a chip brush, and that's another thing I meant to, to say, you're gonna need some of those cheap El Cheapo pig's hair brushes that Home Depot sells in the paint department for a buck each, okay? Three inch wide would be fine. Uh, don't really need anything bigger than that. You're gonna put some of the clean strip in a bucket and you're gonna start slathering it on. Really easy to do. Now, one thing you wanna make sure of is when you get to the sights on the rails, use a Q-tip to wipe away that stripper. That stripper can and does eat into plastic. So you wanna keep it off of there as much as possible. 
a little bit is not really going to hurt it. It might eat, it, eat into it a little bit, but we'll address that when we get into the next video on prepping everything. So you want to work in small batches, one to two rails at a time, one to two legs at a time, one panel at a time, and never anything more than that. And you're going to let it sit for about five to 10 minutes until you can really see that finish start to bubble up. Once it's bubbled up, you want to take a scraper. Sometimes you can use a razor blade. Uh, you can use a putty knife and scrape off all of the old finish. Now you're also going to be left with a lot of finish, old finish and everything in the cracks and crevices. Another thing you're going to need is some wire brushes, specifically brass brushes. You don't want to try to use anything really stiff like steel wire brushes. They're just going to be really stiff and really harsh and probably gouge out the wood while it's soft and kind of damp. So brass brushes to get into the nooks, crannies and carvings of any table. Now you've got everything. You've already stripped it. You've applied the stripper. You've gone to take it off. You've gotten the majority of it off. Now's where those scotch bright pads come in. What you're going to do is take another bucket and you're going to add, mm, I guess about two to three inches of uh, lacquer thinner in that bucket and soak your, your scotch bright pad in that bucket, in that lacquer thinner. And now you're going to use that lacquer thinner to wash off all of the wood. This is really going to help to get down into the pores, to remove all of the the residual lacquer, residual finish that's down in the pores, you have to get all of that out and you really want to work with nice, clean wood. This is also one of those crucial steps where you want to do it with the grain. Never from this point on, you're always going to work with the grain, never against. All right. So with that, now that you've got everything scrubbed down, cleaned up and everything, you're going to set everything off for two or three days we're done with the stripping process. You've got all the parts done. Great. So we're going to leave you there with the stripping and we'll pick up on the prep work in the next video. Very important. Don't skip any of these steps. So be sure to like, be sure to comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, especially if you're interested in how to do this, you're going to want to know when I post the next video. So, as always, I appreciate every one of you guys. Thanks for liking, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you on the next video.